All right, guys, uh, welcome to the second episode of the Dusty Room here with my Dusty Reviews. Um, today I'm going to review my Broadhead. Um, it is the 100 grain Slick Trick Standard. Uh, I'm going to take it apart for you, uh, show you how it comes apart, how it goes back together, and then I will um, tell you a couple experiences that I've had with this Broadhead and show you some pictures of animals I've taken with it. All right, so here we have the four blade broadhead on the end of my um, 340 spined gold tip kinetic pierce. Um, see if I can get it off. Here. And show you how to disassemble, reassemble it. Um, okay, so let me see, I want to do it a little closer, so I got to refocus here. All right. Four blades. You can see the tail end here, there's a little slot there, slot there, stuff. Um, this little ring comes off, and then these blades slide out. From each other. Um, so you can see, um, this one slides into the the tip here, and then this one just goes through the uh, slot there, and they have a little notching system here that holds them together in there. And then the ring here um, goes right around these uh, little tails here and keeps them in. And then when you screw your the tip of your arrow or your arrow on to the back of the broadhead, there it snugs everything right down together. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, simple. There's no screws. There's no, um, uh, snap rings, no rubber bands. It's just, um, blades. little ring here and screw it right on the arrow. There you go. Um, the blades are, are replaceable. You can get packs of them at pretty much any sports retail, sports uh, outdoors retailer or hunting retailer. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, so you can see it's a, a pretty simple broadhead, two blades, a keeper ring. That's what I'm going to call it, a keeper ring. Um, and then I just have this on the end of my uh, Kinetic Pierce 340. I did a review on this arrow. That was the last one in this playlist. Um, yeah, so some stories about this, this broadhead. Um, the first animal I killed with it was a two by three elk. Um, I was sleeping in a bush and I uh, woke up and he was 35 yards from me. I ranged him, got up on my knees, drew back and uh, gave it to him right at 30 yards. He ran about 70 yards and piled up in some of the thickest uh, br brush that, that I'd ever had to get an animal out of. Um, the next animal that I killed with it, I believe, was um, another elk. I shot two years later. I shot a um, two point with it. Uh, we were. It was the last day of the season. I was going to be able to hunt, and I was hiking up the hill with my cousin, and um, an elk kind of jumped up there 
on the side of the trail and I drew back. My cousin ranged him 40 yards. It was uh, 45 yards compensated for 40 with the angle uphill and I shot. I, I got him right underneath the, the, the lung here on this side and it, it was quartered shot and it went through his liver. Um, he only went about 50 yards and piled up real quick, which was surprising to me with that liver shot. I know they can bleed out fast, but um, I didn't know that he was going to bleed out that fast. Um, the third animal I killed with it was this year's elk. He's a three point. I shot him at eight yards. Um, it was a very hard quartering two shot. I put it right behind his um, shoulder here and it came all the way through and out his hip. Um, and I only got back the top half of the arrow. Um, he didn't leave any blood on that. It was it was the shot placement. He he didn't hardly bleed at all. Just the way that he was turned when he turned back, the the flesh covered that wound back up uh, from the inner cavity, and uh, he took off. So, yeah, this arrow this broadhead performs very well. Now I will uh, share with you one experience. Um, I shot a bear with a slick trick broadhead, the standard broadhead. And I was sitting in a stand and the bear was 17 yards away. Um, we had two stands, one was 17 and one was 27. And I, at the time, did not have a rangefinder. I didn't own one and we only had one rangefinder in camp and Mark had it with him. So I was sitting there just constantly running through my mind, you know, 17 yards, 17 yards, 17 yards. This bear came in, quiet as could be. Um, he came to the bait, left, turned around and came back to the bait and he gave me a perfect shot. His arm was forward. Um, I had the, I, I mean, it was there. There's no reason that I shouldn't have killed this bear. However, I shot for 27. I didn't shoot for 17. I hit him high. And what I believe to, that they call no man's land. So kind of up there uh, behind the, the lungs and just right in front of the, the liver there, I think is, is where they say the arrow goes through no man's land, just underneath the spine. Um, <clears throat> and we tracked that bear for over a mile. He went under the stand and, and went around and we tracked him and tracked him and tracked him. Eventually we tracked him to uh, what I think was a wolf den and that was the end of it. We lost blood. Uh, it just didn't, he never slowed down. There was never any real big piles of blood. Sorry about that, battery ran out. Anyways, um, to the end of the point, I didn't ever find the bear. Um, that was the first animal that I had never recovered and it was a rough couple days after that. Um, uh, actually, that was second to last day of the hunt, and I just I grabbed my rifle after that, and I didn't do anything but walk the main road. Um, I didn't see any other bears that trip. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that was my fault, not the broadhead's fault. Um, in the broadhead's defense, uh, I didn't find it that year. Uh, we couldn't. We couldn't see it, could, never found the arrow. The next year, um, my group, of the, the Five Mile Boys, my group of buddies, um, went up hunting up there and they found the arrow on the ground right there where the bait was. Um, it must have just buried underneath the ground somewhere because we couldn't find it. Um, all of the blades on here were still razor sharp after they had been laying in the dirt for a year. They were razor sharp, so um, yeah, that's that's my my review on the uh, 100 grain standard slick trick uh, with the right shot placement. Uh, any broadhead will kill the animal you're shooting at, um, but this is a very stout, very reliable broadhead, and I'll continue to shoot it. Um, like I said in in my other video, unless. I find something new that I want to try. I decide that it's not good enough. Um, 
there's multiple circumstances. My, my setup is subject to change at, at, on a whim, but this has been my broadhead since I've begun bow hunting, and it will probably continue to be my broadhead, especially where I live in Idaho, and it meets all the laws here in Idaho. So, guys, thanks for watching. Um, it's, you know, I'm just, this channel's just getting started, and I'm really trying my best to make uh, good content for you. Um, if you like the video, give it a, a like, subscribe. I hope that what I'm doing here is uh, beneficial to you, and thanks for watching.